Trail Bears and the Seabreeze Sandcrabs. Hello everyone, I'm Billy Gahagan and seated next to me are two men who need no introduction. Therefore, we'll just go ahead and get going. I'm, just <laughs> Join, I'm joined as always by Steve Allen and Rocky Oak and coaches, welcome. Thank you, good to be here. Thank you, Bill. Coaches, this is a game that can go either way. Both schools have a tremendous football history and a, a history where their current records shouldn't really fool anyone. Coach Oakham Seabreeze comes into the game at 1-3. and three. They notched a huge district win last week at New Smyrna Beach. Seabreeze won this game last year 49-36, to 36, where Bartram Trail saw more Josh Stevens and Charles Nelson they really wanted to, I'm sure. Those two guys, however, are now in college, and this is not the same Seabreeze team as last season. No, it certainly isn't, and uh, that's usually the case every year with new parts and places or new pieces to plug into the puzzle. Um, their, the quarterback situation at Seabreeze uh, is certainly one of the unique stories of, of this year's season. Uh, Wilson, the transfer from uh, Matanzas High School, broke his leg in the spring game, I believe, and uh, is out until late in the season. And Muller has replaced him, uh, a young man who uh, has one touchdown pass this season in, in a Mark Beach offense. Uh, that's not the production that that uh, Coach Beach and his staff are looking for, I'm sure. Uh, I think one of the bright spots will be Hayworth, the punter, number 28, a uh, guy that took over midway through the season last year and uh, has got great hang time on his punts. And uh, as, as you well know, uh, the things that I'll be paying closest attention to tonight will be the kick, the kicking game and turnovers. I think those are the things that could determine tonight's ball game. But coach, as you mentioned, it, it is a Mark, Mark Beach offense. The, the coaching staff has pretty much stayed together the entire time Mark has been there. Is it just a situation where the kids aren't the same? Um, is it is it the injuries? Is it a, just a culmination of everything just so far? Well, you know, it's the first time that I will have seen Seabreeze play this year, so I'll have some fresh eyes and, and can probably give you a, a more honest opinion after the football game tonight. But Mark's been running a similar offense for many years, and they've plugged in a lot of different people in there, and they've had great success. But this year, uh, things are just not clicking for them as of yet. But, but a big win last night in the district, or last week in the district. So uh, we'll see what kind of enthusiasm they bring to the field here tonight. We will stop what we're doing right now, and we will get ready to honor America with the playing of our national anthem. After that, we'll get back to our pregame.
and three and putting a few kids in college over the years. But they come in at one and two, and sitting there, are they a little bit better than the record indicates? Well, they, you know, they played Bishop Kenny, who was a, a playoff team from last year, and made a really good win. Mark Forsen got the super job, and they had an excellent quarterback, and those guys um, have kind of gained a, a, a lot of program confidence. So to go up there, it's kind of not, like not going to the old Bishop Kenny. So to go up there and play them tough and, 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 and be in the game all the way, I think that a, a, a speaks well for them. I think that also to beat a Fleming Island team that over the last eight years has won 72 games, um, and then go to St. Augustine, which, you know, one of the things I'm sure Coach Sutherland would be the first to mention that he has not beaten Coach Wild at St. Augustine, and I had to remind him that he is not in, um, <clears throat> it's not a small club of us who have not beaten um, the St. Augustine Yellow Jackets. And um, to any time you get yourself around 100 wins, I think you've done something pretty special. And Dale Sutherland is Coach as good a man as I, as I know in, in this business. He does a good job of, his kids always play hard. They're always well coached. He does a lot of character building stuff in his program. And uh, just uh, can't say enough good things about Daryl Sutherland. He is a, he's a superman. And it's a good athletic program as well. Not just a football program at Bartram Trail. And uh, they do St. John's County very proud. A couple things to keep in mind. Between these two teams last year, Seabreeze rolled up 455 yards of offense. Also last year, Bartram Trail started out 0-5. Their fifth loss of the season was to these Sand Crabs. They went on to finish 8-6, and and they were the district runner-up, and they ended up losing in triple overtime over the state semifinals to Armwood. Both schools are capable of big things, so this should be a really good game tonight. 135 remaining in the pregame. You're listening to Billy Gahagan, Steve Allen, and Rocky Yoakum from Municipal Stadium and Larry Kelly Field. This is not the only game that's going on today, this rare Thursday of high school action. Also tonight, 2-2 two and two Halifax, a brand new program in, in 11-man football, is traveling to St. Augustine, St. Joseph. They're also 2-2. Two two. St. Joseph won last week 38-6. to six. Coach Allen? You know, Coach Brown, again, he's got that thing going over there, and going from seven or eight or whatever, however many men's football to real football, is it's pretty it's pretty serious stuff. Um, I had an opportunity to go out and speak with his team this summer, and I enjoyed that. It seemed like they got some good kids and some talent, and uh, Coach has uh, done some things to try to bring that thing into the, you know, he just wants to bring it into the mainstream, and I think he's done a real good job over there. I look for them to give St. Joseph's all they can handle, and I, I, would, I would look for Halifax to win that football game. Coach Oakham Haggerty at 3-1 and one is traveling to probably the hottest team in the area, University Christian, or University rather, at 4-0. and oh. Haggerty lost 55-20 to 20 to Oviedo. University improved to 4-0 and oh by thumping Lake Brantley, 57 to 14. That's a very impressive score, 57-14, University over Lake Brantley. Lake Brantley has been one of the um, class acts over there in Seminole County. Uh, Phil Ziegler uh, is the head football coach at Haggerty, three and one. You know they're going to be well coached. Uh, they, they played some tough competition, so. Uh, you know, I, I, probably every week we might say this, but this looks like it could be a tough game for University. <laughs> Have they given up a point yet this year? I don't believe. I think they've shut out everybody, That's or it. at least played everybody to a very, very low score. I think that Brantley scored 14. Yes, okay. they did. I guess I that think would... Brantley scored 14, but they, hey, I'll tell you what. That's just like you said, Coach. That's that's incredible. It's just incredible. Well, it's it's 6A Bartram Trail against 6A Seabreeze. Last year, the Crabs were 7-3. and three. They were a district runner-up. Bartram Trail was 8-6. and six. They were a district runner-up. Is this one of those games, although it's a non-district matchup, these guys are still just in that warm-up mode because I know for a fact that Seabreeze is playing for second place in their district. Absolutely. Seabreeze has their eyes set on the state playoffs again. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think that you're kidding yourself if you think you can get your team to the same sky-high level 10 weeks out of the season. And this being a Thursday night game, uh, I think it may be a little slow starting. But as the game progresses, I think we'll see the best of both these teams tonight. Bartram Trail on the year has scored 54 points. They've only given up 47. Seabreeze on the other side has scored 49 while giving up 96. It's been a very un type of year. We're waiting now 
for the teams to take the fields, to, to take the field rather. Seabreeze will kick off to start the first half and they will defend the west end zone. When we come back, it'll be Bartram Trail and Seabreeze High School. Welcome back to Municipal Stadium and Larry Kelly Field. Billy Gahagan, Steve Allen, Rocky Yoakum. It's the Bartram Trail Bears and Seabreeze Sandcrabs. For all intents and purposes, guys, following the torrential downpour we had the other night, the field looks to be in amazing shape. Well, that's what they, that's what the city spent this money for this artificial turf. And they're, they're obviously their pumps are working. The retention pond is, um, Seems to be at a, at a full level, but they've got the field clear and ready for kickoff. And here we go. Sam Hayworth to kick off for the Sand Crabs. Ball will be kicked into the end zone and not returned. So Bartram Trail will have first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. It's nice to have that weapon that can put the ball in the end zone, Coach Allen, that uh, keeps that run back from happening. Yeah, that rule in high school, that it just it just makes it so vital. It just, just eliminates one part of the practice all week long. You know, you take one practice, one special team, you don't really have to work on it if you've got confidence in that guy getting in the end zone, and you can alleviate it. Be interested to see what Bartram's got here. They've got a, a strong tradition of quarterback play and uh, some option background with Dale. He's got, he's, he's, he's well-versed offensively. Calling the signals tonight for Bartram Trail will be number 10, the sophomore, excuse me, the number 10, number four, the sophomore. That's David Coleman on the carry there, number one uh, runner. He's a junior uh, for Bartram Trail, number two. Early flag, holding is the call against Bartram Trail. Check that little inside zone, he kind of bounced it outside, and that tackle was count, kind of counting on him coming inside. A1 officials on it early, folks, setting the tone, holding the call against the Bears. Going to push them back 10 yards. It's now replay of the down, first and 20 from their 10-yard line. Seabreeze defense has given up a lot of rush yards this year so far in the games that we've seen, Coach. Um, I'll be interested to see if they can, if Bartram feels like they can run the football against them. Smith 
pass complete near side. That's Bryce Walker on the reception. Got back the penalty yardage there, back to the 20-yard line. Second down, and we'll call it 11 from the 19-yard line. Reason their 4 3 defense, three deep secondary. Coach Bartram's emptied it out on him here. That's Anthony Young in motion. And Smith's pass falls incomplete. Coach, you mentioned the 4 3 by Seabreeze. Didn't they start out with a three man front? I, 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 they played a three-man front a lot last year, and, I, and they, I'm sure they have the capability of getting in it again. But, but the first couple snaps, they've been in a 4-3. In a uh, some people might call it 4-4. Four, four, but uh, Third down and 11. Smith rolling to his right. As a receiver. Pass is caught by number 85. That's Devin Raddick on the reception. Not enough yards for the first. It'll bring up a punting situation for the Bears. Great start for Seabreeze defense here to get him off the field. I believe that Seabreeze won the toss and referred to the second half and uh, we're able to take a little, little bit of win there is tonight. We'll, so we'll see what kind of uh, a field position they can get from making that decision. They, they got the three and out part. Now they've got to get uh, that football return. Tyler Gallitz to punt it away for the Bears. Here they come. Good job. Javier Sylvester back deep to receive, and he won't get that opportunity. No, it's a roughing the punter call. Absolutely. And that's first mistake in the kicking game there. And, you know, you, you get your defense out there, Coach, and, and they do a good job, kind of get you a little momentum, and you, you want to be aggressive, and they, they come after it, and it's just one of the hardest things to teach in high school football is, is blocking it is. punts. It is. So roughing the kicker is going to be the call against the Sand Crabs. An early roll of the dice that came up with Snake Eyes for them. Bartram Trail will keep possession. They'll now have first and 10 from their 38 yard line. Too soon? Uh, I don't know, but it's a huge, it's a huge penalty. I mean, you almost flip the field. You don't completely flip it, but that's a huge difference in field. Field position. Coach, they're, they're really, that's a three by one there. They're really, Seabreeze really respecting the three by one they yeah, had over top of it there. They, they overshifted their uh -huh. linebackers to the wide side of the field and a smart place to run the zone back to the short side where you're, where you're minus a linebacker. Absolutely, and I, I tell you what, that's one of the things that you know when you play a Darrell Sutherland team, you're going to have to make the plays because he's going to find it. You know, he's going to find the, the places. It looks as if Joey Gatewood, a freshman, is now in a quarterback. Uh oh. Draw play. Fumble on the play. I believe they're going to call him down. They're going to call him down. Coach Jordan Smith is uh, a little bigger than I thought he was. He's only a sophomore, and uh, they they they're a little like Seabreeze in that they they haven't necessarily gotten their offense untracked this year. Now, granted, they've played some three tough football teams in Kenny Fleming and St. Augustine, but they are generally very, very good on offense. Gatewood is going to stay in at quarterback for the Bears. Second down and five. Gatewood has a receiver open in and out of the hands. Oh, almost the young. It'll be third down for the Bears. It's like he kind of gave him the double pump there. Wasn't sure that he was yeah, kind of held out a little too long. Yes, I believe. he did. He did. Never laid over the middle. You know, for what it's worth, Gatewood. If if the roster holds true, that kid is just a freshman. That's a big freshman from even up here. We've got a lot of young kids on the field tonight. Both sides of the ball. We have an illegal motion or illegal procedure on the left guard. Number 63. 
The big winner, Hartsfield, senior offensive lineman. Push the Bears back five yards. It'll be third down and ten. Bartram Trail staying with the same quarterback running back combo. That was another example of Seabreeze shifting their defense to the wide side of the field where the three receivers were, and immediately upon sprint out, both the outside and the middle linebacker were, both went into a pull-up mode to get after the quarterback, and they were successful there. So bringing up another fourth down. Let's, let's, a while ago, the return man was standing on his 40. Now he's standing on his 12. Big difference, Coach. And a good punt. Going to die there. Nose up. Sylvester elects to let that ball go out of bounds. So Seabreeze will have their first possession of the evening. First and 10 from the 25-yard line. Bill, I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, Sylvester's role is going to be tonight. He, uh, he had a good ball game when we saw him here a few weeks ago. Um, young kid came in there, ran the ball hard, got some good reps. Got nicked up a little bit in that ball game. But uh, they got some really good reps out of him. Shifty, um, and, and that was really their lone bright spot. It night. was their lone bright spot. It looks like they're going to use Rashad back here a little bit. No, Rashad's going to go to wide out. Scott Summers is in at mm -hmm. the running back. Justin Muller is your quarterback. First and 10 from the Seabreeze 25 yard line. Muller tosses far side. On the reception is Rashad Floyd. We're going to get an illegal block, I think, Coach. I, interesting, it looked like they wanted to play some kind of man, maybe make a man free situation there, but there's nobody, nobody peeled on that running back there. Got to hold the other way. I would like to have the concession for the A1 officials flag laundering at the end of every game because they get them out and get them dirty. They do get them some exposure. So we'll replay the down. It'll be first and 15 Seabreeze from their 19-yard line. The Bears are in a 3-3 stack. They seem to be in a zero coverage after that. Mother hands the ball off. That's Scott Summers on the carry. He's going to pick up the penalty yards. It'll bring up second down for the Crabs. Minus the penalty, you'll take those five-yard runs on first down all day long. Seabreeze in their ace formation. Summers stepping up, oh. and he's going to take the handoff and go absolutely nowhere. First guy in for the Bears is Nick Martin, number 99. Stoned that before it ever got started. Put right. Seabreeze back in that third and long situation here. Screen coach. Coach, Too Beach, obvious. coach Beach has a great screen game. I, I know that. Well, he's in the middle of the field. Usually he likes to do boundaries. You guys should know that. Correct. <laughs> Muller going to hand the ball off once again to Summers. And he once again met, it, uh, met abruptly by number 34, Hayden Good. It'll bring up fourth down for Billy Hayden Good is their leading tackler. He's averaging nine tackles a game. He's done a real nice job and looks to be one of their, the anchors there on their defense. So right now we're, we're kind of back to what we talked about in the pregame is that uh, both offenses trying to get untracked. Just coming hard off the outside edge there, number 34. Here Hayworth comes. back to punt. Oh, looks like he might have just caught it off the side. Yeah, we're going to get a little roll. Uh, the punter's best friend, the roll. Gets it across the 50 where parts the trail. A little setup shot. First and 10 from their 35 yard line. 6.53 to go in the first quarter. Billy Gahagan, Steve Allen, Rocky Yoakum from Municipal Stadium. You're watching the Seabreeze Sandcrabs and the Bartram Trail Bears. 
So after a change of possession there, the, the Bears have advanced the ball 15 yards. Their first possession, they start on the 20, this time on their own 35. Back out to be the quarterback is the sophomore, number four, Jordan Smith. So it looks as if they're two platooning a la Steve Spurrier on us tonight, guys. Connor Roberts in motion. And off the nice ball. ball on the ground. Seabreeze. It looks like it might be recovered by Seabreeze. They're waiting for the official word. Coach Sutherland getting back to some of his roots there, mixing his spread sets with some motion and getting to the option. Right. And uh, it's good stuff. So you got to take care of the football. Mother Ballish comes up with the little recovery for the Sand Crabs. Their best field position of the night. It'll be first and 10 at the 50 yard line. Summers again in the backfield with Muller, the quarterback. Showing pressure. They don't have enough to cover them up on the outside. Now they're coming late. They're trying to go, okay, they baited them into it. And it's a really it's a good call. Muller's pass was intended for Rashad Floyd. It brings up second down. I believe that ball might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. I think Muller made the right reaction, but the ball got tipped there. Um, Incomplete pass. Muller hands the ball off to Summers. He comes near side. It's like Partridge trying to mix up that on against that three by one. They're trying to mix it up and go out late like they did last play and then this play here. They come and they stay and they keep their, their box Hayden Good secure. And Jake Marshall on the stop. I think it's important. You got to know who you're calling who you're calling defenses against. You got these spread teams that don't huddle. Are you calling against the quarterback or are you calling against the coach on the sideline? And that makes all the difference. Muller fakes the handoff to Sylvester, keeps the ball himself, goes up the middle. And he's met by a pack of bears. <laughs> Gonna come up short. We'll see what the decision is here. Four substitutes coming in for Seabreeze. None of which appear to be the punter. Muller. Three guys off coming the out. I hope they've got the right numbers. Summers. Yeah, they're going to keep Summers in at quarterback coach. Fourth down and one. Summers. Kind of and a they also wild cat. They bring in John Scotty. Sylvester in motion. Fake the handoff, Summers. Oof. Easily picks up. Well conceived. Well conceived. They, they get you a little soft on the edge with the jet motion, and they come right back underneath it. That was Tanner Murphy on the stop. The Fisher's timeout will be for one break. As they take one, so will we. Five minutes and 19 seconds to go in the first quarter. We are scoreless from Municipal Stadium. and the Bartram Trail Bear, Bears, the Bears Bears from Municipal Stadium. Seabreeze just picked up a fourth and one and they're staying in that same heavy set. Summers at quarterback. Sylvester in motion, Summers keeps the ball. Coach, it's basically a little, a little quarterback counter yep. with, the power, with both power backs being your pullers. Uh -oh, we're getting a little pushing and shoving after the play here. Number one, I think he felt like he got his face mask pulled. Uh, he's going to come over and he can tell the coach about it, it looks like. Looks like Anthony DeLeo is involved in that right there. He's also one of the leading tacklers on the Bear defense. 
second down and six for Seabreeze. From the Bartram Trail 31 yard line. Javier Sylvester on the carry. Takes the ball down to the 25 yard line, 26 yard line. Third down for Seabreeze. Four ten and counting. Coach, that small box, they, they, they've really got a hole because they don't have a guy for the quarterback there. When they read it out, you know, you've got right. seven for seven for six. And you know, wow. that's what they're counting on, I think, that, that Seabreeze's guys up front can't block their three up front. Nick Martin on the stop again for the Bears. Dare I say he's pretty good? Absolutely. <laughs> Been tough to handle so far. It'll be fourth down for Seabreeze from the Bartram Trail 30. Last time at fourth and one, Seabreeze went for it. Opting to go for it again here. Stop route. Muller has a receiver open, throws downfield, and it hits. It hits. Um, Hayden Good I, I, in the I believe, back. Yeah, the ball was a little underthrown. Uh, had, a, had a man open, I think, if he could have laid the ball up to him. Three safety was on the wide side of the field. We roughed the quarterback here because we've got a hanky laying here on the 35. The official was talking to Nick Martin. The Seabreeze offensive linemen are clapping as if it was a penalty against the Bears. Didn't We're appear waiting to, for these guys. Didn't appear to, to be a rough. Out. Personal foul wow. against the Bears. That's going to be enough yardage. Coach down. Sutherland's questioning that call, and he is uh, being welcomed to Daytona by the A1 officials. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big penalty. Huge. So Seabreeze converts their fourth down thanks to a penalty. It's now first and 10 from the Bartram Trail 15 yard line. As we have timeout called on the field by the Bears. I think the coach may want to talk some more to the officials I here. I believe it's exactly what he wants. <clears throat> How many times do we take those first half timeouts with us into the locker room at halftime, never to be seen again or yep. used? And I always had to make a note on my game plan, use your first half timeouts, just to remind myself. I think it's a good opportunity for him. And I, I think he's, you know, not being down there, Coach, but I, I think he's got a good argument here. I do, too. We have the benefit of a replay system up here, and, and we didn't see anything uh, yes, sir. that would have indicated a personal foul, but... Well, and Coach Sutherland's defense, it was a good use of a timeout. But now that that time is over, he still continues his conversation with the White Hat. Everyone else is ready to play ball. Be interested to see if they get that seventh guy into the box now that we've got it down here tight, keeping one in the middle. So it's first down Seabreeze from the Bartram Trail 15-yard line. A1 officials deciding that the call on the field stands. Seabreeze continues to threaten to be the first team to score. Back to their heavy set, tonight. Coach. I'm looking for the quarterback counter here. That's been their, their best play out of this. Summers, and everybody's moving. Defensive line shifted and the offensive line reacted to it. And we have illegal procedure against the Sand Crabs. Coach, I, it was a good shift, too, because they're trying to, I think Seabreeze looking to maybe get that counter back over there away from that one technique or that zero, and they shifted it to that side because they they're technically at least one short when they bring the, the two backs over. Chase Hamilton and John Scotty are your big backs. Hand off to the near side. Five to four. Nice. Down. Down. Real nice footwork there by the running backs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks like the force to figure kind of came up and just sold out. Sam Hayworth.
fourth in to attempt the point after for the Sand Crabs. Scott Summers on the hole. Snap, hold, kick. It's 3.13 to go in the first quarter. 7 0. The penalty was huge. Yes, yes, it was. Coach, I can remember being in this stadium and, and watching Pensacola, Washington in a state championship game and maybe against Manatee, perhaps, and there was not a place to sit down. Here comes the replay we're able to see on this run. Got a little kick out block there. Nice way to use the blocker. Uh, number 46, the other back was downfield and made a key block there, but good footwork. Uh, good team execution there by the Sand Crabs. Absolutely. I think Seabreeze is realizing that they may have a little bit of a speed advantage. The Bartram defense is, they're, they're scrapping and they're tough, strong inside, but they don't look overly fast. Juniors, Bolden and Walker back deep to receive for the Bears. Sammy Hayworth from his 40. Got a nice little breeze. Um, feels like it's at his back. This one's going to be returnable. High kick, fielded at the 10. Bolden. Far side of the camera. Jacques Dolan's on the stop for the St. Crabs. First and 10, Bartram Trail from there, 25. Be interested to see how Bartram's going to answer here. See if they can get their offense on track. Jordan Smith again, your quarterback. Sure tackle there by number 11. Good throw and catch. RJ Stokes on the tackle. Second down and five for the Bears. Bowman on the carry. Picks up about three yards. Down. Kind of what I, I thought we'd see a little bit more of, Coach, is just a little bit, just, just basic run, inside zone, outside zone kind of stuff. I, just based on what's happened um, to this point in the season with the Seabreeze defense. CB's defense standing up again. Will they come after this again? I would think not. I would think they'd just go ahead. And they may they may give it a little pressure, but no, it's return all the way. Nice pun. Yes, into the it win. is. Sylvester from his 26 coming to your side has a few blockers. Big block that time by Will Ross. Oh, Sylvester oh, takes the ball up to the 45 yard line. CB first and 10. Nice return. Absolutely. Very good. That's just what I'm making note of there too. Good return, good field position near midfield. St. Crab's in business here. Nobody on the number two receiver to the wide side of the field. First time we've seen a cover two look, just totally uncovered out there. They're going to run out late, Coach. Number 15, hold on, Garrett. He stops for real game to the second and 10. It's Good shout out to 
It's nice to see two teams when you can look out there at their defense and tell what they're playing. Absolutely. Two people are lined up where they're supposed to be, and uh, you can tell that both these teams are well coached and, and, and their kids are lining up where they're supposed to be. Now, after the ball snap, we'll see what happens. But Coach, old guys like us call that American football. <laughs> That's a super job open field tackling right there. Jake Marshall knocks Summers out of bounds. Jake Marshall in the back. We'll see Summers for the Third down and 10 for Seabreeze from their own 45 yard line. Marcus Bullard checking in for the Sand Crabs. Tell you what, Coach, that was a nice throw. He threw Very it nice in. throw. Nice read there. Muller checks in. Big chunk of yards from the Sand Crabs. First down for Seabreeze in Bears territory. That swing curl combination, it becomes like a jet curl. The old jet curl, it, it was, was... Tiger Ellison's run and shoot. That's exactly <laughs> right. Muller. Ball. Pass intended for Rashad Floyd in and out of his hands. I don't know that if he catches that ball that that goes anywhere anyway. No, it looks like they was one of those little tunnel screens, and it looks like they had it well defended. They had outside leverage and pretty good pursuit coming from the inside too, Coach Gagan, and uh, I think you're right. Jordan Helm, one of the many bears there immediately. Second down and 10 for Seabreeze. Mm. They brought Summers. pressure. Summers is the to grasp. Quarterback is hurt. Quarterback is get, he's up slow. He's limping on his left foot here. We're going to have a break in the quarter, Coach Dagan. At the end of the first quarter, your score is Seabreeze 7, Bartram Trail 0. Welcome back to Municipal Stadium. Larry Kelly Field, Billy Gahagan, Steve Allen, and Rocky Yoko. 7 to nothing. your score. Seabreeze leads Bartram Trail. This is Seabreeze's possession. First play of the second quarter. Speed sweep looks like a possibility. Oh. They got great penetration. Yes, they did right away. They kind of sniffed that out. They've seen it a couple times, Coach. They've got, a, they've got some leverage out here if they can get to it. As the motion man started across the formation, the linebackers slid this way, but the guy that I thought might be able to make the penetration, it really came from uh, somebody inside, maybe one of the inside backers or number six, the defensive end. Hayworth into punt for the Sand Crabs. The return man for Barton Trail stands at his 10. Not a very good punt by Hayworth. Off the side of his foot. He was attempting the old lost start of the coffin corner kick. He was going to try to put it over there in the right hand corner, but it uh, spun off his foot. You're right, Bill, and just uh, slid out of bounds at about the 25 yard line. 
Coach, we never uh, we never tried that to the right. We, that's always a left side thing for us because we know if you miss it, if you shank it over there, you're going to get nothing. If you miss it going left, it goes back to the middle field. You got a chance to get some yards and still maybe stop the ball carrier. Um, it's just tough to execute as a punter. When I coached at Bethune Cookman, I asked Coach Wyatt about that, and he said it just depends on which way the wind's blowing. <laughs> Joey Gatewood in at quarterback for the Bears. Keeps the ball. He's going to run right up He's going to run for a good lane here, right? He's taking the ball from the 25 all the way up to the 45. Game of 20 on the place. Sets up for first and 10 for the Bears. Gatewood will, for obvious reasons, stay in at the quarterbacking position. Keeps the ball again, comes near side, has a block. Tell you what, he's sneaky. He's sneaky, sneaky fast. fast. Yes, sir. Flag on the play, and it's going to be called again. Bartram Trail, no doubt. As Gatewood is slow to get up after the play. Gatewood is a big freshman. You He's, guys are absolutely right about that. I mean, I was just hoping that was a misprint because he's a big dude if he's a freshman. And he is in a long line of quarterbacks that have come through this Bartram Trail program, and Daryl has had a history of doing a great job with those guys. Um, you know, currently at Tennessee, he's got Nathan Peterman. Um, a few years back, Kyle Parker. Kyle Parker left, Coach. He left early, uh, went to Clemson to play baseball. In his first, that first spring, he was all SEC. Wow. Excuse me, all ACC. Wow. You know, having really good athletes can make you a good coach. I, I'm living proof of that. <laughs> I think we all are, Coach. When you, you're a lot better when you got good guys. There will be no penalty on the play. A1 wow. officials conferring and getting it right. It'll be first and 10 for the Bears on the Seabury side of the field from the 45. Tell you what. Gatewood looks to pass, brings it down, looks to pass again, pass the 10 at that time for Gary Rucklander, incomplete. Yeah, there's probably a freshman mistake. Didn't have his first read there, Coach Gahagan, and, he, and then he just... Tried to make something that wasn't there happen. Lucky didn't get intercepted. Do you think it was a double read? Or do you think I, it was just his decision after the first one to find the outlet? I think they had a little screen of some sort going on this side and it just didn't open up for him. Um, and I think he probably shouldn't have thrown that ball. Sutherland's going to stay with the freshman on second and ten. I like option here. Well, there's the first part of the option, the dive to the fullback. Ricky Altman on the stop for Sand Crabs and Pete down to the Bears. That's just one of those plays where you don't want to say, hey, that was a bad read, because then it takes away from Altman playing his responsibility, staying at home, and and making the stop. Right. Well, and you got to, you got to, people run the option, want you to stay home, that's for sure. Great play here by number 11. I just got up in it and sniffed it out. Made a great open field tackle. Good blue call. That's RJ Stokes. He's had a good ball game. He so has, far. coach. Uh, the whole Seabreeze defense has, has stood up pretty, pretty well so far tonight. And I think that uh, Coach Sonye and that group would be real pleased with what's going on to this point. Now what wind there is, uh, it's kind of swirling around here. The flag shows it's at Seabreeze's back. Slight end over end punt. It's going to bounce to the 12 yard line. And just watching that as it happened, coaches, it appeared to me that the punting unit 
went after the returner instead of running to the goal line. You typically tell, hey, somebody's got to run to the goal line, turn around, and, and stop that. Play. That's what you'd like to see happen. I, I, I was a little afraid the, the series returner was going to grab the ball, <laughs> too. It too. But uh, he did it, and that's a right choice made there by the return team. And Seabreeze will take the ball on the 20-yard line, 9.23 to go, first half. Five possessions thus far for the Bears, four punts, a fumble that was recovered by Seabreeze. The Sand Crabs on their fourth possession of the first half. Muller has a wide open Rashawn Floyd. Oh, just behind Rashawn Floyd. If he puts it on him, coaches, we're looking at 13 to nothing yep. with the point out. They got what they wanted there. They had a good play call. Uh, quarterbacks got to execute. That's been kind of their Achilles heel this, this season so far. You know, we're in week five, and, and the Sand Crabs have thrown one touchdown pass. It's very uncharacteristic for a Mark Beach football team. In this offense, it's generally very prolific. I don't know if I'm more impressed that he's only thrown one touchdown pass or the fact that you knew that five weeks into the year they've only thrown one. Bill, I aim to impress. <laughs> Getting his homework done, folks. Steve Allen, he's up here for many, many reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Muller hands the ball off, and again. The Bears sniff that out right away. One of the guys in on the stop, Luis So. Tough sledding up inside. It looks like the, the Crabs are having a little more success outside and off the edges. Third down and 15. Muller and Sylvester. Screen it. Oh, my goodness, Great. Coach, I'm with you on that one. Number 13. Wow, let me tell you that Brother DeLeo there, he is the third leading tackler on the team, and, and Anthony, he brought it up the field right there and just wrecked that play. Jamel Fleming was the intended receiver for the Sand Crabs, and bringing fourth down Sammy Hayworth in once again to punt. Moral of that story, Coach, is third and 15 is a defensive down. Yes, it, it is. It's a defensive yes, it down. I take that one every time. Yes, on sir. Defense. Yes, sir. A.J. Bolden back deep to receive. He's standing at his 40-yard line. Hayworth gets a nice high pump Excellent. Off. Bolden will let that bounce. Oh, he's going to catch he's it. Field it. And at the 27-yard line, he needs that right away. Javier Sylvester down on the punt coverage. Keeping Bolden right where he fielded the ball. First and 10, Bartram trail from there. 24-yard line. Moved it about 50 yards, Coach. We'll take that net punt average right there every time. Some people have said thus far in the one and three season of the Sand Crabs that Sam Hayworth has been the offensive MVP for these guys. Well, to this point, his punting and their taking care of the football is what's, what's got them with the lead here tonight. along with the stout defense, because their defense is really standing up here. I, I, I'm, I'm real impressed with how they're handling this offense. Jordan Smith back in as the signal caller for the Bears. And they certainly are setting up the option there. They, they continue to give yeah. the ball to the dive back, but I know their coaching staff's looking at the way Seabreeze's support is playing the option out there. We'll see that before the night is over. We will. He's, he's not going to be able to hold on to it that long to run the option. It's going to have to come out of there a little quicker, which is a little bit of a tell for the defensive guys. But if you're going to get five on first, you're, you're going to like that. There's no reason to pull it out and start pitching it if they're going to let you just run it at them. Smith and Coleman in the backfield. Pump fake. Oh, stop and go when they knocked him down. And there should have been interference. Okay. Oh, they're going to call it. I believe it's a good call, Coach. Without a doubt. 
Seabreeze coaches, they're asking for uncatchable. Well, it's going to be uncatchable when you've been knocked down 10 yards short of where it's yep. going to go. I'm willing to bet if we watch that replay, you're just going to see two sets of feet getting tangled up. I would have thrown no flag on that play. I would disagree with that, Bill. I'm pretty sure we've got a pretty good form tackle. Um, you know, you're teaching that DB. If you get beat on a double move, just knock him down. You know, it's not the NFL. It's not going to go, you know, you're going to get yardage. You're not going to get the play or the spot, I should say. Well, fortunately for you, I don't think we're going to get the replay up in time, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you. Well, I'm just, I'm placing my trust in, I'm playing my trust, <laughs> placing my trust in the A1, A1 officials. officials. There, there it is. Hey, that's, that's, every that's, time. Every time. Okay. Pass interference to call. I stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be first and 10 trail from their 44-yard line. Oh, they got a play. Oh! They are unfortunate. Seabreeze almost came up with that on the carom. Both of these teams um, are giving everybody a, a healthy dose of slip screens. That's pretty much all we've seen tonight from, from both of these teams. I like the double move call. They, they had plenty of time, and they, they just couldn't execute it with the penalty out there, but I like that call. Coleman on the carry. Yes, he is. He's still on the carry. And finally brought down. He crosses the 50. As Dr. Wakeman would say, he's at the 52. <laughs> but unfortunately, he's down to the 49 yard line. Oh, you don't say. Sure wish we could see that again. Yeah. I don't think you do, Bill. <laughs> I, I think. I think if we look at that one more time, folks. Let's see. A few plays back. Play. Double move. Yeah, mm. thanks. You're welcome. Uh -huh. <laughs> Back to the live action where we should stay. <laughs> Coach Allen hates it. Monday to be able to bring up fourth down for the Bears. Fourth and one. We got a decision here. Looks like they're going to go. I think they are. <laughs> we don't have a decision. <laughs> no, we don't have a decision. Right now, we I'm going to use my, my mud count or, or whatever you want to you use and maybe try to draw them here. See if we can get a flinch. And they got it. They got out of a stand up, player. out of a stand up player. That drives me crazy, coach. Stand up players at the line of scrimmage. We try to try to teach that sugar technique that you don't go past the D lineman's feet, so you don't ever have to worry about that happening to you. And he's standing right on the ball. Chase Hamilton, the senior linebacker, is going to get called for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. The officials will take. Time out for a water break. 6.31 to go in the second quarter. Your score, Seabury 7, Bartram Trail nothing with the Bears threatening. Back to Municipal Stadium and Larry Kelly Field. 6.31 to go in the second quarter. Seabreeze leading Bartram Trail 7 to nothing. Bartram Trail with first and 10 from the Seabreeze 44-yard line. So far the matchup's been all we thought it would be. Pressure. And a quarterback sack. Chase Hamilton on the sack, making up for his penalty that allowed Bartram Trail to convert their fourth down. It's like our running back's got to take a, do a little bit better job there. He just kind of gave him a little bit of a, a touch and look out. Second down and quite a ways for the Bears. 
Smith going left, throwing near side on the screen. Anthony, excuse me, uh, Gary Brooklander on the reception. Seabreeze glad to give him that play on uh, second and 15 or 20. Brings up a third down mass substitution here by the Bears. Third 15 for the Bears. Smith stays in at quarterback, 5-0-3 and counting. We're back to that down and distance combination here. This is a defensive setup. Smith rolls left, has a receiver wide right open. Number 11, Bryce Wolfram, the reception. He's right away five, by five, Bubba Ballinger. He's going to bring it down in a long situation. The Bears haven't run far after they've caught the ball here tonight. The secondary from Seabreeze has done a nice job of coming up and making the tackle after the catch. Absolutely. I, I think we also have, I, I'm, I've not seen, not that they do not have it, I've not seen an explosive um, wide out yet or, or somebody's been put in a position that they could be explosive. We've emptied them out. They're going to go. They Smith got, oh, he is wide slap. What a great call. That was a call. That's a film yeah. thing, Coach. He found something on yeah. film, you that know, this week that, that they knew they could go to that. There was, that was, they never deliberated at all. That's, you know, you're not thinking fourth and five, fourth and six, that you've just got a play call that's just going to be money, and they just dialed it up right there, and they moved the change. Matt Magden on the reception for the Bears. Plenty of yards for the first down. Bartram Trail keeping their drive alive. Magden, fake handoff to Magden, rather. Oh, what a great play. Intercepted. Pass is intercepted by Cole Dunnigan. Cole Dunnigan. Cole Dunnigan's had a great year. A great year, Bill. He's, he's been one of the stalwarts on defense. First and ten from their 18 yard line. Muller setting up the screen. Pass of the ten summers and falls incomplete. <laughs> Love to throw it on first down, whether it's screen or throwing it down the field, and you'd like to be able to keep people off balance. It's great to do until it's incomplete. <laughs> and then when it's incomplete, you're just looking at that second and long, and, you know, you're looking down your play call sheet, and you usually come back to something basic here and just try to get a little piece. Ball. Summers. I believe in riding that play out as far as possible, but that just... That was a little extreme, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> Anthony DeLeo had penetration. He was all over the mesh point right there and just made a great play. Uh, we, Seabreeze is lucky the ball's not on the ground right there. Third down and 11. About three minutes left here in the half. There really only been two shots taken down the field, one by each team. Showing pressure. Here they come. Wrap him up. Oh, I thought I thought he was going to toss that ball back, Coach. I thought he was tossing it back to the quarterback. Hayden Good once again in on the stop for the Bears. He's going to bring up third down and a definite punting situation. Timeout Bartram Trail. 2.47 to go in the first half. 7 0 Seabreeze leading Bartram Trail.
Welcome back to Municipal Stadium. Larry Kelly Field, Billy Gahagan, Steve Allen, Rocky Yoakum. 7 0 Seabreeze leads. Bartram Trail Seabreeze punting on a 4th and 14 situation. They were close off of this right edge last time. I think they're going to play it safe here. They're coming from their left. Hayworth gets off another high spiraling punt and will hit at the 50. And it'll roll across the 50 to the Bartram Trail 47 yard line. The Bears take it over on their own 47 yard line. Well, with 2.34 left, I'll, I'll be interested to see how Bartram attacks this series. If they had a, a good drive, you know, had a good drive going, and they shot themselves in the foot. The turnovers will do it to you every time. It'll be interesting to see if they uh, run the option here in, in this latter part of the first half or if they just kind of keep it in their pocket until the second half. Yeah, because like you said, Coach, it, it, it's, it, it's coming. You know, it's coming. I'm sure they're also thinking, let's go ahead and get these points on the board because to start the second half, they also have to kick off. And their long field goal for the year, Billy, is 39 yards, and uh, so we'll see where they can advance it to. Okay. Gatewood back in at quarterback for the Bears. Running the option here near the side. He's going to be wrapped up by Cole Dunnigan, the young man who intercepted his pass last, uh, last possession. Well, the answer is they're going to take it out of their pocket. <laughs> and they, they had a, a four-yard run with the quarterback, Keith, that time. Gatewood. Oh, oh, that's dangerous. Pass caught by Bryce Walker. That could have easily been a six-point interception for Seabreeze right there. Does it appear that it's taking his ball a lot of time to get to where it's got to go? To get out of his hand and to get there as well. But, you know, I'm watching Seabreeze up front, and, and, and I'm seeing a, a lot of guys playing high. And um, I, I, I'd, I'd be looking to, to, to run the ball at that. Third down and eight. Coach Sutherland not liking what he sees. Football timeout. 122 to go. We'll stay right here. Just, just to finish your point, Coach. Go ahead. You know, I think you're going to balance. you got to balance it out. It's, you know, you, you have a third and a bunch here. You're in, you know. Possibly two down territory. You can't kick a field goal. There's 122 remaining. You know, you don't want to Realistically, you'd like to not give it back to Sea Beach. Realistically, you'd like to score the ball, but you know this third this third and eight here But again, I have to ask is this a we have to score in this possession? No, situation? I don't think so. I agree that doesn't mean they won't throw the ball down the field, but I don't think they have to score. It's a one-score game, and I think anytime you're in a one-score game, you don't have to worry too much about scoring on any particular possession. One of the hardest things when you're when you're play calling on offense is just maintaining your patience. You know, you, you, it's easy to get out of your to to get that the momentum to have an effect on you as the play caller. Gatewood making the handoff. It can go five. again. They're holding it. Hold it again. Yep. Hold it again. Yep. And that's what they've come back to. The only time they've gone down the field is on stop and go. And they, they you know, if you're going to play those hitches so well and be right there on top of them, it's a, it's an excellent call. I think if we look at that replay, I'm right again. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's what I'm thinking. The I'm fact that you both turned and looked at me. <laughs> Said it all. I stopped. I'm looking for a little humor in the whole situation because it was it was fourth and eight, and they were obviously going to go to the hitch and go, hey, guys, I'm betting the next time there's fourth and long, Marshall Trail is going to go hitch and go. But that's why I'm up here. A1 officials against my better wishes have gotten that call correct again <laughs> keeping the drive alive it'll be first and 10 Bartram Trail now in Seabreeze territory at the Seabreeze 36 you both it'd be about 52 it'd be about 52 right now they 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 probably need 15 
12 to 15 yards to maybe be in range. We got to work on that graphic that they have on television where it says, right. let's get here. Gatewood. The old wraparound draw. Yes, sir, Ooh. coach. The, 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 the distant cousin of the Statue of Liberty. That's Jordan Smith in a quarterback now for the Bears. Coach, I think that's about half of them that they need for that field goal. They're going to they're gonna give themselves a chance. It's clicking at 53 right now. I'll try to get up here and get this run quickly. Smith hands the ball off. The Bears have one more timeout. Yes, they they're going to have to hurry and get a play run here on third down. Yep. 30 seconds and counting. Smith calling the play, 25 seconds and counting. Third and short for the Bears. Smith, oh, it's an interception. Pass was intended for number 88. Coach, a lot of bodies, a lot of bodies in there to be throwing that pass, and you know, they, they've gotten themselves in a good situation, and it's turned bad for them again here with the turnover. That's two pass interceptions and a fumble. Correct. Three, three turnovers for the Bears. Kicking game is really kind of bent towards Seabreeze because of Hayward. Um, Seabreeze's only mistake on the kicking game was roughing the punter early. It didn't cost them any points. And these turnovers have definitely cost Bartram two, two, you know, scores in two situations, whether that be a touchdown or, or possible field goal. First and ten, Seabreeze from their 29-yard line. Sylvester on the carry. That should run out the clock. Seabreeze will take into the locker room a 7 to nothing lead over Bartram Trail. We'll be back. Lake Brantley. Lake Brantley has been one of the um, class acts over there in Seminole County. Uh, Phil Ziegler uh, is the head football coach at Haggerty 3-1. and one. You know they're going to be well coached. Uh, they, they played some tough competition. So, uh, you know, I, I, probably every week we might say this, but this looks like it could be a tough game for University. <laughs> Have they given up a point yet this year? I don't believe. I think they've shut out everybody. That's or true. at least played everybody to a very, very low score. I think that Brantley scored 14. Yes, they okay. did. I guess I that think would... Brantley scored 14, but they, hey, I'll tell you what, that's just like you said, Coach, that's that's incredible. It's just incredible. Well, it's it's 6A Bartram Trail against 6A Seabreeze. Last year the Crabs were 7-3. and three. They were a district runner-up. Bartram Trail was 8-6. and six. They were a district runner-up. Is this one of those games, although it's a non-district matchup, these guys are still just in that warm-up mode because I know for a fact that Seabreeze is playing for second place in their district. Absolutely. Seabreeze has their eyes set on the state playoffs again. Um, I, you know, I, I think that you're kidding yourself if you think you can get your team to the same sky-high level 10 weeks out of the season, and this being a Thursday night game, uh, I think it may be a little slow starting, but as the game progresses, I think we'll see the best of both these teams tonight. Bartram Trail on the year has scored 54 points. They've only given up 47. Seabreeze on the other side has scored 49 while giving up 96. It's been a very un -Seabreeze type of year. We're waiting now for the teams to take the fields, to take the field rather. Seabreeze will kick off to start the first half and they will defend the west end zone. When we come back, it'll be Bartram Trail and Seabreeze High School.
playing of our national anthem. After that, we'll get back to our pregame. I think that also to beat a Fleming Island team that over the last eight years has won 72 games um, and then go to St. Augustine, which, you know, one of the things I'm sure Coach Sutherland would be the first to mention that he has not beaten Coach Wild at St. Augustine, and I had to remind him that he is not in, um, <clears throat> it's not a small club of us who have not beaten um, the St. Augustine Yellow Jackets. And um, to any time you get yourself around 100 wins, I think you've done something pretty special. And Dale Sutherland is coach as good a man as I, as I know in, in this business. He does a good job of his kids always play hard. They're always well coached. He does a lot of character building stuff in his program. And uh, just uh, can't say enough good things about Dale Sutherland. He is just, he's a superman. And it's a good athletic program as well. Not just a football program at Bartram Trail. And uh, they do St. John's County very proud. A couple things to keep in mind. Between these two teams last year, Seabreeze rolled up 455 yards of offense. Also last year, Bartram Trail started out 0-5. Their fifth loss of the season was to these Sand Crabs. They went on to finish 8-6, and and they were the district runner-up, and they ended up losing in triple overtime over the state semifinals to Armwood. Both schools are capable of big things, so this should be a really good game tonight. 135. Remaining in the pregame, you're listening to Billy Gahagan, Steve Allen, and Rocky Yoakum from Municipal Stadium and Larry Kelly Field. This is not the only game that's going on today, this rare Thursday of high school action. Also tonight, 2-2 two and two Halifax, a brand new program in, in 11-man football, is traveling to St. Augustine, St. Joseph. They're also 2-2. Two two. St. Joseph won last week 38-6. to six. Coach Allen? You know, Coach Brown, again, he's got that thing going over there, and going from uh, seven or eight or whatever, however many men's football to real football, is it's pretty it's pretty serious stuff. Um, I had an opportunity to go out and speak with his team this summer, and I enjoyed that. It seemed like they got some good kids and some talent, and uh, Coach has uh, done some things to 
try to bring that thing into the, you know, he just wants to bring it into the mainstream, and I think he's done a real good job over there. I look for them to give St. Joseph's all they can handle, and I, I, would, I would look for Halifax to win that football game. Coach Oakham Haggerty at 3-1 and one is traveling to probably the hottest team in the area, University Christian, or University rather, at 4-0. and oh. Haggerty lost 55-20 to 20 to Oviedo. University improved to 4-0 and oh by thumping Lake Brantley 57-14. to 14. That's a very impressive score, 57-14, University of Welcome back to Municipal Stadium and Larry Kelly Field. Billy Gahagan, Steve Allen, Rocky Yoakum. It's the Bartram Trail Bears and Seabreeze Sandcrabs. For all intents and purposes, guys, following the torrential downpour we had the other night, the field looks to be in amazing shape. Well, that's what they, that's what the city spent this money for this artificial turf. And they're, they're obviously their pumps are working. The retention pond is, uh, Seems to be at a, at a full level, but they've got the field clear and ready for kickoff. And here we go. Sam Hayworth to kick off for the Sand Crabs. Ball will be kicked into the end zone and not returned. So Bartram Trail will have first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. It's nice to have that weapon that can put the ball in the end zone, Coach Allen, that uh, keeps that run back from happening. Yeah, that rule in high school, that it just it just makes it so vital. It just, just eliminates one part of practice all week long. You know, you take one practice, one special team, you don't really have to work on it if you've got confidence in that guy getting in the end zone, and you can alleviate it. Be interested to see what Bartram's got here. They've got a, a strong tradition of quarterback play and uh, some option background with Darrell. He's got... From Trail Bears and the Seabreeze Sandcrabs. Hello, everyone. I'm Billy Gahagan, and seated next to me are two men who need no introduction. Therefore, we'll just go ahead and get going. I'm, just <laughs> Join, I'm joined, as always, by Steve Allen and Rocky Oakham. Coaches, welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Thank you, Bill. Coaches, this is a game that can go either way. Both schools have a tremendous football history and a, a history where their current records shouldn't really fool anyone. Coach Oakham Seabreeze comes into the game at 1-3. and three. They notched a huge district win last week at New Smyrna Beach. Seabreeze won this game last year, 49 to 36, where Bartram Trail saw more Josh Stevens and Charles Nelson. They really wanted to, I'm sure. Those two guys, however, are now in college, and this is not the same Seabreeze team as last season. No, it certainly isn't, and uh, that's usually the case every year with new parts and places or new pieces to plug into the puzzle. Um, their, the quarterback situation at Seabreeze uh, is certainly one of the unique stories of, of this year's season. Uh, Wilson, the transfer from uh, Matanzas High School, broke his leg in the spring game, I believe, and uh, is out until late in the season. And Muller has replaced him, uh, a young man who uh, has one touchdown pass this season in, in a Mark Beach offense. Uh, that's not the production that that uh, Coach Beach and his staff are looking for, I'm sure. Uh, I think one of the bright spots will be Hayworth, the punter, number 28, uh, the guy that took over midway through the season last year. 
and uh, he's got great hang time on his punts. And uh, as as you well know, uh, the things that I'll be paying closest attention to tonight will be the kick, the kicking game, and turnovers. I think those are the things that could determine tonight's ball game. But coach, as you mentioned, it, it is a Mark Mark Beach offense. The, the coaching staff has pretty much stayed together the entire time. Mark has been there. Is it just a situation where? The kids aren't the same. Um, is it? Is it the injuries? Is it a, just a culmination of everything just so far? Well, you know, it's the first time that I will have seen Seabreeze play this year, so I'll have some fresh eyes and, and can probably give you a, a more honest opinion after the football game tonight. But Mark's been running a similar offense for many years, and they've plugged in a lot of different people in there, and they've had great success. But this year, uh, things are just not clicking for them as of yet. But but a big win last night in the district, or last week in the district. So uh, we'll see what kind of enthusiasm they bring to the field here tonight. We will stop what we're doing right now, and we will get ready to honor America with the